What is up, YouTube? Hey, yo, how you doing, guys? It's a new day. Welcome back. It's podcast fifteen. We're back, guys. Once again, I'm trying to keep up to date with these podcasts. Keep them going, of course, because what's the point doing one every so often? Every week is the way. I'll keep you updated what's going on in my life and around the world. Um, it could be like my ver- version of like Pew News, like PewDiePie does, you know. Um, but no, I've done it more like a podcast. I could do like a news style vlog each week where I just talk about what's going on. And uh, But I do want to do one based on the Padre football tournament that I was just watching, the Epfa Nations Cup, which I'm going to talk about later in this vlog. But guys, it's so good to have you back. It's not a vlog, is it? It's a podcast. Um, yes, there's me always getting words mixed up, but that's the fun we have here, guys. There's nowhere else in the world where you get a podcast like this. Well, there probably is. But please watch. Please stick a like. I'm so desperate for your views. I need your help. No. No, I'm not playing that game. I'm not going to beg you guys. Come on. No. If you're not interested, go away. Like, seriously. Like, unsubscribe now. Like, I don't want to see you again if you're not interested. If you don't like everything I have to say. No, I'm joking. I'm going to aim to offend some of you. Not, well, most of you. Well, nowadays, what can you do? You're going to offend most people at some point. But yeah, thank you for coming back, guys. I love your support. Thanks for the love. And as always, keep it real. It's another video for you guys. What? Yeah. It's another podcast. Yeah, but it is a video. But yeah, it's a podcast. Yes, it's a visual podcast. It's a vidcast? I don't know. Guys, but it's good to have you back. I've been a bit frustrated this week, creatively. For some reason, I don't know why. Lacking ideas for videos, really. Probably why I'm doing more podcasts. Yeah, that's probably why. Lack of content, just talk about random stuff. It's easier, really. When you don't have the the brain content, the content in your brain, like I normally do, like the ideas, I don't know. Well, I've got an idea, like I said, to talk about this Padre football tournament. But I have to talk about it now on this podcast. And Theresa May crying, that's another thing that I'm going to cover today. So keep it real. Stay locked and loaded right here. There is nowhere else to catch the Louise 21 podcast than right here. So keep it real and I'll see you after this. Roll the info. <laughs> But yes, from the last podcast, you may remember that I had a really bad spot on my nose. It's almost gone now completely. It's not a big deal, is it? It's just my face. Like, I can't change... You can't change your face. Well, unless you do Botox and all that. But they do say that if you do Botox, say you go to sleep that night and you sleep on your side. No. Yeah. If you sleep on your side with Botox, right, you're going to end up with your eyebrows as brackets to your eyes. Think about it. Because it's just going to move your whole face. I don't know. I don't know about Botox. Don't don't change yourself for that sort of reason. Some people do. But really, there's a limit, you know. Don't go full Kim Kardashian. Let's just say that. Um, but yeah, that's my face. I've got to live with it. I'm not, I don't care about all that stuff. It, it, well, it's not, not saying anything, but it's more of a, a female thing, in it? To go to alter your body in some way. It's, it's not right, though, in some cases. Like, just to... For other people, like, for other people, you're doing it. You're not doing it for yourself. Well, some people do it to make themselves feel better, but... Really, I don't know. It's a difficult one. It's a, a, a tough subject, really. All, all the, the alterations people have to their bodies now. It's like they're robots, not even people anymore. What is left of the human anatomy on half of these people? These fake people, I don't know. I don't know what I'm saying, I'm just spinning around my phone right now on this desk. I've got a plan for this podcast, um, but it's like an intro. Um, but no, yeah, Monday, like I said, creatively I was struggling, I don't know. I was just frustrated because I wasn't actually doing any vlogging or podcasting. I don't know, I was like chatting to someone about it, I was like, why was I just so annoyed all day? Um, and they were like, uh, well, 
depends. Could have been just something random that you thought of. Um, but then I was like, well, I wasn't vlogging that day. So like, oh, yeah, that'll do it. You know, the thing you love the most. Not doing, not, well, I wasn't able to in some way. Well, Mondays I can't really because mum and dad are off. Uh, and this Monday my brother was off because it was another bank holiday. Yes, May is full of bank holidays. And if you're in another part of the world, you may be confused. You just have a lot of bank holidays, a lot of days off for no apparent reason. But yeah, that that is it. And summer, where has it gone? I'm looking out this window like, where is summer? You know, where? No idea. It was here and then it's gone. Uh, by the way, the other week, yeah, when I got sunburned, well, now my arms are peeling and it's disgusting. My arms are like, like snake skin, like peeling. It's disgusting. I feel like a snake shedding its skin. Not that you really want to know that. It's like cringe. But I, I don't care what's cringe and what's not. Really, I mean, I'm just... You can't really say you're just loving life, can you? Because life has its ups and downs. It's a bit like a graph, you know, it goes up, it goes down. Quite a funny analogy, really. But yeah, the other thing is, recently I've been watching James A. Castor on Netflix. A uh, funny stand-up comedian. But well, he's quite funny, he doesn't swear too much. But he still seems to be funny. Um, and he's got like a series of stand-up shows. They're really intricate and well thought out. The jokes, like, to get the punchline is quite difficult. Like, it doesn't give you the punchline straight away. Like, it builds up to it. It's a really clever way of stand-up comedian. F for a stand-up comedian. Um, the amount of planning you must do is just amazing. I mean, look at me with these podcasts. I don't plan any of it. I mean, when it comes to comedy, like, that's another level. Like, to write that sort of stuff. It's not easy, because you've got to test it out on an audience. Well, you do that on YouTube, too. Then you get comments back. Um, it's similar, but when you've got a live audience, that feedback's direct. And if it's good, great. If it's bad, then oh dear. Well, they've all been there, most of these stand-up comedians. Um, but the good thing about James Acaster is he doesn't actually like get like controversial. Or maybe that, that's what makes a good comedian. But he just doesn't overstep that line or risk that. He's not a Frankie Boyle. He did men mention Frankie Boyle. Um, a comedian that has overstepped the line sometimes. Ricky Gervais, but he's just good at it. That's how he does his comedy. But no, yeah, he's, he's a good comedian. Uh, you don't laugh straight away all that much. Like, not everyone would get it, but... Yeah, it, it, it takes takes a while to get used to his comedy. Some of it's a bit, like, dry. Well, very dry, actually. Um, just typical English humour, innit? Um, I'm not good at telling jokes. I was thinking of telling one of his jokes, but no. It's too intricate and like, I'm the worst with punchlines and telling jokes ever because I'll get something wrong, for sure, with any joke. They've got to be simple but effective. I've got an uncle who's, who's, who's really good at them, um, but they, they border on racist and offensive and... Well, no, no. I'm not going to incriminate anyone. But you know what I mean, uncle jokes, dad jokes. They're just another level. Now, what people do is look at memes that have jokes in them. We do, like, there's a picture of someone, like some sort of character from a movie or a show or something. Then there's a caption underneath. Something written that just makes people laugh. And, and it's effective, but the old days of telling jokes pretty much gone, really. If you know what I mean, like, there used to be, like, just, there was, like, a, a messaging service where they'd send you jokes every day. It was like back in the day, like, call me old, I don't know, but yeah, you could do this thing where they'd send you a, um, like you'd pay like a couple of, like 10p or something, and you get like a joke every Friday, terrible, like, and now we've got memes, just so much easier, but yeah, they're not always good, that's the thing, now the best one is like where it's got like, no one ever, or it's like no one, and it's got you underneath, like me underneath, or, you know, so it's just trying to say like, no one ever does anything this way, and then there's you. We can all relate to some of those things. Uh, it's pretty simple but effective. But yeah, jo telling jokes is different. You've got to have the timing as well. Like, it comes with age, trust me. The older you get, the better you'll be at jokes. Like, most people, you know, they'll be over 50, over 60. 
they're proper good at jokes because they've been practicing it for years and then when you try them out on younger people they tend to be in some cases easier to make them laugh in it but yeah my uncle did do a stand up show at a local pub it was great I saw the video back it was just it's quality because you've got a small audience they're all a bit drunk a bit tipsy you know tipsy's alright you know because you've got sober drunk tipsy hungover tipsy's the only one where you don't cry think about it <laughs> so it's it's really effective for comedy people are a bit drunk you know a bit tipsy telling a few funny jokes they laugh even more like don't tell jokes to sober people it doesn't work um yeah but I'm no comedian I'm just naturally funny no well I don't know you gotta laugh at yourself I'm capable of doing that I mean in life like too many people are too serious like oh don't offend me oh no I got offended someone got offended oh my god oh no we got offended oh dear what do we do you know what I mean like get over it people are too like one dimensional nowadays like just laugh at yourself sometimes I mean like me personally I can do it all the time like wheelchair jokes you know I've got tons of them like they just make normal people able bodied people feel awkward but I love making people feel awkward in some ways it's just the funniest thing that's another kind of thing but you've got to laugh like I want people to laugh I'm telling a wheelchair joke you know you know I'll offer to do the dishes when I can't it's quite funny really for me but the other people are like oh no don't say that but like dark comedy sometimes you got to I mean you got to have a sense of humour like for the bad times you need that humour to make to to combat that in some ways to make up for it I don't know because life is literally up and down it's a roller coaster like Roland Keating once said many many years ago I now feel old <laughs> no that's another thing people say oh I feel old well you're you're only as old as you feel, really. Like, I act like a child sometimes. So I kind of feel like a child, you know what I mean? Feel young, younger than I am. Just because of the way you act. Some people act a lot older than they actually are. They're all like stiff and like neutral and like, oh. You know, don't get old before your time. Don't do that. You know, I, I met so, so many over the years through my dad's shop, like so many clients he has, that they're like, they're old, right? Like, they're, they're, you know, they're older. You know, I don't want to offend anyone. Oops. <laughs> and, you know, they've had life experience and they've got banter, like loads of banter, and they're just young at heart, really. I met a lot of older people that are young at heart. Then I meet people younger than me on my age, like, Oh, I'm dead, my life's over, blah, blah, blah. Oh, this is shit. No, take, there's a friend of my brother, he's like, just like finished uni, he's like, I don't know if I'm going to get a job if I don't get a 2 1. If I don't get a 2 1 grade at uni, how am I going to get a job? Oh my god. I don't know. You know what I mean? Like, get over it. Is it that bad? I mean, I, I wasn't panicking when I was at uni. Probably why I didn't find a job. Probably should have started searching, not after I finished, but before I did that wrong. But I wasn't panicking. I wanted to get that grade. I had to retake a year. Then I was panicking. Because just stress. The stress of that. I was like, after this, I'm not doing a master's. I'm not doing anything. End it there. That's enough. Enough study. I've been studying since I came out of the womb. This was like four. And everyone's been studying. Like, most of your life, you, you're working towards it. Like, oh, you want to get a job? What do you want to do when you grow up? You know? Who cares? What do you want to do when you grow up? I want to have a life. You know, that, that'll do. Not be old before my time. No, but yeah, I passed for a 22 or 23 year old. People have said in the past. I mean, a couple of years back, I could have passed for a 15 year old. I've got a high pitched voice as well. But everyone hates their own voice. But no, when you talk, you don't hate your voice. When you listen to it back on a video, like me doing every day, it's torture. It's torture, but I do, I do watch my videos back. Not many people do, but 
you got to you got you got to know what you sound like then you get the odd comment like you're weird you know I had one comment once like shave the moustache no who are you you want me to shave my moustache can't even say moustache moustache yeah no like come on what are you on yeah yeah well I'm going to shave it for someone I don't even know on YouTube bear in, bear in mind I don't get that many comments like stand up it's just like in front of you there's Hundreds of people, they'll be heckling you, you know, cheering you, booing you, whatever. But on YouTube, it's different. Like, I just crave a lot of comments, but I don't get many, I don't know. And that kind of annoys me, but I get views, but some of you just don't bother putting likes. So put a like, guys, come on. If you're watching me for the first time, I'm Luigi21, don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. Gotta drop that in there, and I. Why not? Every now and then. Remind you who I am, what you're watching. But yeah, Podcast 15 is underway, literally. And I've been just chatting randomly for long enough. I thought, this is good. This is good. And as you can see, I moved the mic, put on my other desk here, instead of right in front of me. It works. I think it works. But yeah, it's, it, it's good to be back. I feel like I've been away, but I haven't. I don't know why I'm saying that. But, um, what's I going to say? The, um, the vlog, number 40. It came out the other day. I hope you have seen it. If you haven't, do go and watch it. It's really long, but it's a movie about the final weekend of Pauchia football. I will not spoil the video, but yeah. I may have spoiled it in the past. Saying watch what happened on the last weekend. But do watch it if you haven't already. Vlog number 40. On my channel. Well, it, it, it's the latest upload at the moment. Well, before this. Is this vlog 15? Podcast 15? Yeah, it is podcast 15. Whether I say vlog or what, you know it's a podcast. You can see the time limit, time on the video. It's definitely a podcast. Um, but I feel like it's a be better way to get everything out. When I make a vlog, I don't want to sit there talking the whole time. Because it, you know, it defeats the purpose. Um, so I do this most of the time I'm trying to keep it regular but um, yeah we'll see how long that lasts I don't know how long that's going to last because you know me I'm going to get caught up in something else doing more vlogs when the weather gets here when like what's going on where's my summer so yeah Moving on to actually what I'm supposed to talk about, if I can, probably end up talking about something else in between. But I want to. I, let me do that. I, I don't want to stop myself. Just you know, go with the flow. There's no ad lib going on here. It's just me and you guys. It's just me and the camera, really. But yeah, you get what I'm saying. Podcast 15, guys. I am Louise 21. Welcome. If well, you, what? Why, why am I saying welcome? You're already here. Thank you. Alright, that's just me being weird. So yeah, Theresa May resigned as PM. And she did cry. She became human for a second. Stopped being a robotic android for a second. Um, but yeah, I saw an analysis of it by Russell Brand on his channel. Whatever it is, I don't know. He, he uploaded the video talking about Theresa May. And how the system is what messed her up. What screws up every politician because it doesn't allow them to be human and admit the defeat or mistakes or make mistakes even because they're so pressured by the system and like other politicians to be perfect and like neutral in every situation and give the best answer all the time and not say you know what I can't do this or this is difficult or blah 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 yeah they're supposed to lead our country and be in charge but you got. You need some more, some more humanity in these people if they're gonna help other humans. You know, us, the people. If they're gonna do what matters, empathy is needed. You need to have that human nature to be able to do what's best for other humans. That sounds weird, but um, you know, she, she didn't appear human at all till that moment. That. The, the teary moment 
the break in her voice that was due to emotion. You know, I mean, that happens when you, when you, when you realise that you just can't do it anymore. Like she realised that her job's over. You know, that she couldn't do anymore. But it's okay to fail sometimes and let someone else do it because she was dropped in at the deep end. Let's just say that because it, you know it was already decided. The whole Brexit thing started before her, and it's been going on probably way too long. Yeah, I mean, way too long. Probably is the wrong word. Definitely too long. I mean, we need more more humanity in politics. And now, what's happened? The Brexit party have won, and we've got Nigel Farage, the worst possible replacement, the worst possible person. He's far from human, let's just say that. We'll see what happens, but... Yeah, I don't care who I'm offending, but uh, yeah, just... Nigel Farage, no. I don't agree. The stupid Brexit party. Decision was already made, what, you know, it doesn't mean he's a hero. What's he celebrating for? Jesus. I mean, it's not good. It's not good times, like... Theresa May, at least, but this... Yeah, everyone was criticising her, though, to be honest. And so was I, but this is just worse. Be careful what you wish for. I mean, if some people that voted for Nigel Farage probably like him or agree with him, or they just don't know anyone, they're giving up and just ticked any box. Yeah, probably, they probably ticked any box, just like at random, but I mean, who would choose him? If you did, fair enough, but I mean, come on. I don't want to overdo it with politics, but got too many androids around the world too many people that just are yes men or women and or you know and people were criticizing seeing her crying but that job will get to you I mean you got to be like perfect how can you be perfect at anything without making mistakes you're not going to learn but it doesn't allow for that the system doesn't they just confined by their role literally no more no less that's it politics is, is never an easy one but especially in the UK at the moment with what's going on with Brexit we, you know no one knows no one really knows not even the politicians everyone's running around acting like they do but really it's all made to be confusing for the people so we don't understand it so we can't actually properly criticise or analyse what's going on because nobody knows the politicians don't so how can they tell us what's going on If it's so confusing they don't even know they're just as much aware of what's going on as we are so yeah does anyone know what's going on? anyone honestly like you can say what you think or what it looks like is going on but you don't know what's going on. It's just confusing times. Country's falling apart. Then in America, they got Trump, and they go, he goes, yeah, let's make America great again. Okay, when was it great? First of all, you know, we we need that sort of slogan here. But is it going to work? Make Britain great again, yay! We've been criticising every PM we've had ever. Well, it's not going to change. We just want them to, well. Uh, they they need more humanity is what I'm saying whether we're criticising their mistakes or whatever it's just they're not really considering us and their job doesn't allow them to in some ways half, well half of them probably are to blame for being weak minded people but that's another question Boris Johnson stay away like, that's it you know, we don't want him anywhere near number 10 for Christ's sake he's got a 25 year old girlfriend now apparently like, why are you dating him, dear? Like, come on. Yeah, a bit... I don't know. bit of money. Has he got... No. Could date someone with more money? Come on. But, yeah. He's dating a 25-year-old. Fun times. Confusing times. Oh, yeah, we'll date a politician. All right. What is the deal with that? I don't know. I don't know. Enough of that. Anyway, I want to talk about... 
the app for Nations Cup. The, uh, it's a Pacha football equivalent of the European Championships. EPFA being the European Pacha Football Association. Um, so yeah, international level. You had England, Northern Ireland, Republic of Ireland, France, Denmark, Austria, Finland. And the top five team teams in this qualify for the World Cup in 2021 in Sydney, the Pacha Football World Cup. So yeah, EPFA Nations Cup. You play it like a like one big group, and then who finishes where? They play for each place. So first and second play in the final to win. Second and third play, you know, and so on. This is after they've all played each other and accumulated points. That is, whether that whether I explained it well or not. It's the European Championships, and England won. We got to the final. We beat France two nil, but you don't understand. We came from two nil down. To win on penalties. The most unbelievable final I've ever seen. In Pacha football. Let alone football. And you know what. It's the year of comebacks. Liverpool Spurs. Now the England Pacha football team. And I know a lot of these players. Played against them many times. Some of them I know personally. Most of them. Well, Pacha football are a big family. But played against them many times. Played with some of them. Alongside them in, their, in, in uh, different teams. But yeah, so just amazing. It's like a 15, 16, 17 year journey to win this. I mean, the World Cup, we came close, you know, came very close. It was a final. You know. They've got so, so close, worked so hard. Credit to all the staff, it's amazing. And we did this comeback to win. Through the difficulties, all the quality France have. Now France are some of the best one of the best teams in, in the world. But we we didn't give them any respect. Yeah, they had a 2-0 lead. Maybe the second goal was our mistake. But from there, we just got it back. We gripped the game by the skin of its teeth. You know, just... What's the phrase? Grab the game by the horns. That's it. And we they just... We just they just dominated. Like, in those minutes where we... We had the chances to counter, we did. Because the danger for France playing us is the passing. When we get the passing moves going. Because they dribble a little more and then flick it in the last minute and get some amazing goals that way. And they have some top quality individuals too. Momo being one of the best in the game probably. Uh, when it comes to dribbling and stuff. And passing around the box. And scoring goals. Hence him getting player of the tournament. But England did it. From 2-0 down... Counter attack, bang bang, goals. Two goals, penalties. And we did it on penalties. Which is not like England. The most nervy way, most stress filled final I've ever seen or ever watched. I mean, I, I love Pacha football. This just is another level for England. It's great. It's just quality because has some great young players in there too. To be part of that team is just. To, you know, for them, it's just amazing. Um, I can't believe it, still. So great for the sport. Um, and it really motivates a lot of players just to to kick on, really, with their careers. Keep going, you know. Um, as long as I've been playing, I've never seen the England team do that well. It's a real, real, real top, top team. Like, it's not an overnight thing. There's years and blood and sweat and tears gone into that team and they really were a team and that is what won it the team effort celebrations were crazy everyone went mental jumping around on running on the pitch you know typical final celebrations and glory credit to the French who had a great tournament scored a lot of goals did not concede any goals until the final no goals England one or two conceded, no, I don't know, not many, maybe one, well yeah, but yeah, not many goals conceded as, as well, but credit to France who got that far, but England just amazing, amazing, I got no more words, I mean, 
like France didn't give us a chance. They thought we'd win it. You know, they thought they'd win it. They didn't think we'd win it ever. Like, why would you think? But I mean, they thought they were champions already. I mean, in their position, you would. All the finals they've won. Uh, but no, England said no. This is ours this time. This is our trophy now. And we beat the World Cup holders. France. They they beat USA in 2017 in Florida in the World Cup final. But we beat them here. Yeah, amazing. I love this sport. It just keeps amazing me every day. From the lowest level to this high level. Amazing. Anyway, guys. Tonight is the Europa League final. Arsenal-Chelsea. We will see what happens. Who will come out on top. Interesting. You know, all, the, all these London teams in these finals. Europa League in Baku, in Azerbaijan. Let's see. I can't wait. I can't wait to see that as well, obviously. The big game for me is Spurs-Liverpool. Champions League final. It's another level. Like, If we win that, Arsenal fans are going to suffer so much I can't wait and in every conversation like they can say whatever but if we win the Champions League we will have the Champions League like conversation killer like no 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 we got the Champions League we're going to shut up every Arsenal fan it's going to be their worst nightmare and oh they're rooting Liverpool to win guarantee that but all the United fans seem to want Spurs to win because they hate Liverpool because they're, they're, they're getting close to their their amount of trophies but come on Spurs I just can't wait just, sadly I'm not going, I've got friends going can't, can't wait to try and spot them there I'm going to try, I don't know if I will you know, how, how am I going to well, I can try, I've spotted teammates before, friends of mine at games uh, but this is just for Spurs it's the pinnacle and we've got a new stadium it's all coming together in the same season. Top class manager. Uh, whatever happens after this happens. But we've got to win. you know. In it to win it. Harry Kane will be coming off the bench. Probably. Probably coming off the bench. And. He might be rusty. He might not. But we will see what he does. He is our legend. Our club legend. We've got a lot of legends. That have got us this far. Son. Lucas, it's Sissoko, there's so many players that have really stepped up to, you know, Lucas, uh, out of being a fringe player, he's a main player now. Since Kane's been injured, he's done a lot, stepped up, got a few hat-tricks, two hat-tricks, one in the Champions League, one, one being in the, the Premier League. So amazing season for him, for this new stadium, just... I've enjoyed it so much going to the new stadium. I've been lucky enough to go. It's just. It's football. And I've talked about Pajo football already. It just never ceases to amaze. The comebacks we've seen this season. Just. Not your average season. Every now and then you see a good comeback. Of course, the Liverpool AC Milan is up there, but come on. Like, the way Liverpool did that to Barca, with their, like, B team. Like, Milner. Milner's going to be in the Champions League final. Again. Well, they, they lost it last time. Jurgen Klopp, he is cursed. He is cursed with the Champions League. He's been to a final many times. No. One time. He's lost. He lost to Bayern Munich. And he, when he was at uh, Dortmund. So it's a bit of heartbreak for him so far and last year. It's going to be more heartbreak because I hope Spurs win this. I'm not saying anything. I want my team to win. What else can I say? I can't predict above that, can I? How am I going to predict? No. There's no way. I mean, come on, you Spurs. Come on, you Spurs. We got this. I mean, imagine if Spurs win, and then Arsenal win Europa League. We're going to meet in the Super Cup final. It's going to be a London derby. North London derby in the Super Cup. 
God. <laughs> what is going on? It's crazy. Just what a time to, to, to see football, to be a football fan. Um, within my own sport and embodied football, you know. Just what, what, a, what a time to be alive. And, yeah. Just enjoy it. Try and enjoy. I'm gonna try and enjoy it. Arsenal, Chelsea. I don't care who wins. Really, like they're both my rivals. Yeah. Come on, you Spurs though. Beat those Scousers. We've got to. They got. They're gonna lose again in the final. Sadly for them. After Spurs. So yeah, it's been a crazy few days. And of course the Monaco Grand Prix. Vettel coming in second. Yeah, I mean, there's not much going on in the F1 world. Of course, Nicky Lauda, uh, the loss of him, shook the F1 world. And they, and they were doing the minute silence for him at the race, wearing Nicky Lauda hats. And so, yeah, that, that was emotional, but yeah. Just another one. Another great Monaco Grand Prix. It's always good that Hamilton won. That's the problem. For me, anyway. Um, but yeah, the other day I just had that sudden urge after seeing that just to play Grand Theft Auto, I don't know why just play GTA but I'm saying Grand Theft Auto because GTA half of you want well, people don't play it when you win though but yeah, so I just have that sudden impulse I don't know why, I mean it's just random and it's in the race I'm going to drive some sort of automobile in a video game but yeah I, I've never bought into the Formula 1 games they're just not good like the handling is terrible when it comes to car games on PS4 you got Gran Turismo but I've heard Forza's really good but that started out on Xbox didn't it I think it's on PS4 now too I don't know I'm not up to date with my gaming uh, GTA or I might play Red Dead Redemption but just feel like GTA I don't know why it's one of them things um, so I might just have to end it here and just play. I don't know. Is it is it that worth it? And yeah, I haven't done live streams in years playing video games because I quit Fortnite completely. I wasn't any good. I hated it. Like it just stressed me out. So I just didn't play it. And live streaming, I just wasn't. It wasn't nice. So maybe for FIFA, when a new one comes, possibly I start doing Ultimate Team. But GTA is just funny online. You get the, all the crazy people. So it's risky as well. But I might have to do a live stream at some point. They're heavily addictive once you start. I'll I do like loads once I start. It's just getting there. But it's not even like because I want to entertain you guys, no offence. Yeah, screw you. It's all for me. This channel's about me, not you. No. <laughs> what I'm trying to say is um, I want to enjoy it. And if I'm doing a live stream, I might be like I'm talking to myself. But I'm good at it. I'm good at talking to myself. I'm doing that right now, aren't I? So, I mean, with GTA, it would just be a laugh. You get the odd people just going crazy on the mic, me arguing. I've done that in the past on GTA. In the early days of YouTube, I did do a few live streams on there. While playing GTA, I just lost it with one guy one day. I just took it too far, but you always did. You always do with the odd idiot who thinks they're better than you. Thinks they're, thinks they're good at the game. You know, or then you swear at them like, I'll stop swearing. But I just busted that every swear word. Just went, went full... I went full Armageddon on <laughs> Anyway, I might do that, I don't know. Stay tuned for more vlogs, though. And more podcasts. Podcast 15, guys. Yeah, I don't, I, I don't know how long... This is going to last, these podcasts. Am I going to keep up to date? Probably not. Am I going to upload one every week? I'll try. I'll do my best. But yeah, like I said, I might be doing live streaming. Just for the fun of it, just to see. Because, uh, I mean, I used to do Twitch. Briefly did Twitch. Didn't get much success. Because I'm rubbish at Fortnite. So why would I bother anymore? I'm not even good at the game. You know, 
Ninja, come on. All those millions he's making. In three months he made more than you make. In what, 15 years? On your average job salary? But yeah, you've got to be good at the game. I'm not good at the game. I didn't even enjoy it, that's the thing. And in live streaming I just can't. I, don't, I, don't, I just couldn't. But maybe GTA, like I said. Because it's more light hearted kind of game. There's a lot of killing and violence, but. That's a video game. That's what you do. But yeah, guys, I want to thank you all once again. But yeah, just. If you get a day like I had the other day, where you're just annoyed at everyone, annoyed at the world, just try and do something that makes you happy. Something that you love in some way. Um, don't just dwell on it. I mean, you're going to have those days, but don't feel bad that you feel bad, you know what I mean? Or listen to music, do whatever. But, I don't know. I have days like every now and then you get a day where you're just not too happy. You know. It's normal. Not just if you're on YouTube or whatever. However great things are, you can still be down. However rich you are. I don't know. But yeah. Money doesn't buy happiness, but to a certain extent it will feed you and keep you alive. Um, but happiness, I don't know. You know, happiness, I don't know. Money, I don't know. But all I'm saying is you will get a day when you're down and just don't feel guilty for that. Just accept it as one of them days and just do what you can to get over it. But if you know what I mean, don't, don't be like, oh, I shouldn't feel bad. I should always be happy, like on Instagram. Everyone's always happy. Look at my great life. Yay, I'm loving life. Every second is great. Yeah. No. Don't do that because it's not true. Be yourself, even on Instagram. Like, admit when something's wrong. Don't just be always out. Like, yeah, great life. I love everything. It's great. Look at my perfect life. Let me make you jealous and depressed while you scroll through your Instagram and your Facebook. Seeing how happy everyone else is. When really they're not. They're dying inside and they're like dead inside or something. Or just depressed but putting a fake face on, you know. Don't do that. I mean, I'm alright. In general, I'm happy. But, you know, what is happiness? It's a word. That's all it is. It's a word. Like, you can't just smile and then be happy. You have to feel happy and then smile. But it's not going to be every day. And some people don't even show it when they are happy. They might not look, you know. You never know. And you never know what other people are going through, so... Even if you're happy, someone else might not be. And they will see you being happy. And they will probably be jealous. And want to knock you out or something. Or they'll just be jealous and not say anything. But that's life. Um, you know, you're going to have your moments... Where you just don't feel like speaking to anyone. And you're at the moments where you feel great. But not everyone else does. So then, you know. There's a balance. There's a balance. You know, you've got to take the, roll with the punches. The ups and the downs. Like I do on this channel. I mean, I try and like keep some personal stuff out. But on the podcast, I don't like it. Get more realistic. And yeah, like I said, I was down Monday. I'm alright today. Because I'm doing what I love. And the weather's crap, that's probably why. Just hope for that to be better. I mean, I was ill the other week, I was so ill. With the sunstroke and the cold I had and flu, I don't know what it was, but... With two weeks it's put me out of sync. You know, I was better and I was worse and I was alright. That's how it is when I get a cold, it's just not enjoyable. So I've been through a lot of annoying stuff, so... To get one day when I'm down was... It took me back, I was like, why? Why am I feeling this way? But then you feel bad about feeling bad. Then you feel anxious about feeling anxious. Not saying I have anxiety, but you know. Some people do get a bit paranoid. Everyone's guilty of it at some point. No one's like, yeah, I'm perfect all the time. I'm 100% fine every day. It doesn't work like that. And it shouldn't. And people would appreciate it if you're honest. You know, just be honest. Don't fake it all the time. You know, if you've got a persona you're putting out there, maybe for, you know, 
you see it with famous people they do it and they want or youtubers but i don't i don't do that so much maybe i'm not not that good at it but i'm more honest than i i go for the honest approach i'm not the best actor either but they're like, hey, I want to do crazy stuff. Today I want to jump off a roof, watch this. That's not my style. Well, I, I probably would end up, if I tried that, it'd be me driving off a roof. That wouldn't go well. <laughs> you know, it's jackass style, chopping trolley off a roof. I don't do those sort of, yo, I'm crazy. That's not my kind of video. I watch them, but I don't do them. But here we are. The end of podcast 15. I'm rambling. I want to play GTA. Do I really? Yes, I do. So that is the end, guys. Thank you. I love you guys. Keep it real. Every day. You know, be happy all the time now. Just do whatever. Just roll with the punches, like I said. Appreciate the ups and the downs. Keep it real as always. I am Louise Twenty. I'm your host. Don't forget to like, share, comment and subscribe. I love you guys. As always, take it easy. I don't know how many times I've said that. How many times I will, but thank you guys. Bye.